I'm a columnist at the Vancouver Sun, sometime photographer. I got the job to do a column that was going to be once a week. He was making selfies of people before people were making selfies of themselves. Cannot help but smile when you see footage like that of this legend, this icon of this province, and really somebody who as said in the documentary, was taking selfies before selfies were a thing. That was a snippet from a new documentary called The Society Page, directed by Kevin Eastwood. And it is about Malcolm Perry, who is the longtime society columnist with the Vancouver Sun, who interviewed all the who's who and then lots of interesting people who had interesting stories to tell. And it was all put together in this beautiful documentary that you must watch. So joining us now is the star of the documentary, Malcolm Perry. Thanks for joining us. And the director of the documentary, Kevin Eastwood, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having us. Okay, we're going to start with you, Malcolm. What did it feel for someone who's trained your camera on so many people over so many years to have the camera turned on you? It was novel, <laughs> but I thought it was, I thought it was done with considerably more skill than I turned my camera on, camera on others. Right, okay, here, come on, shake no, your head. No, that's just not true. Right? No, yeah. Malcolm, as you can see, is just always very modest and very humble about his work, but th that's why it was nice to put uh, the attention on him for once. Yeah, I think you nailed it, and I get to say that I was there for it. Yeah. So kudos to you, Kevin, for, for bringing to this documentary what it was like to be in Malcolm's world. Like, that one headline that popped up that said, you know, I used to work for the Vancouver Sun, it said, you know, May 3rd, 1991. It was... When did you start doing that column? When did At the it Sun? Yeah. That was September 91. 91. Yeah. That was your first. Yeah. So back when I was driving the cruiser for Rock 101 and every community <laughs> event that I was at, there you were with your ever-present camera, stirring it up and making everybody look beautiful. Well, I don't know about that because I gave you a photograph here. I took of you many years ago and you look exactly the same today. <laughs> so. I must have screwed something up You're back so then. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Can we talk about the photography? Because, and we'll talk to you about your photography and project in a second, but you really see yourself, I think, authentically as being one of a generation of real photographers, not like me with an iPhone whipping it out and just taking a yeah, shot. Well, in a way, I was a real photographer. I do think it should bear in mind that the photographs I did for my column thousands of tens of thousands of them. Say. essentially they are snapshots they are not really uh, not a photograph where you set about composing and and have a conception for what you, they were snapshots they you were would hold the pretty, camera up and yeah. and and be like and there was no checking the the photo in the moment you had to develop film and get like right. people don't understand the shots that you got were how many how many photos have you developed over your career? In film? Yeah. In uh, thousands in chemicals, but <laughs> hundreds of thousands like beep, 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 on right. digital. Right. Yeah. Well, since we're talking about the Amazing. photography, and I promise you, we'll get to you in a second, sure. Kevin. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about the way you took the photos. Yeah. And I want to bring in a little clip. This is Maureen Wilson from Sweatco talking about your unique style and how it flowered. Oh. Oh. I'd heard stories about this guy that, you know, took pictures of women's heaving breasts. And, you know, you happen to have a low-cut dress on, then you're going to see some cleavage. But my experience was he just wants me to look my best. And photos from above, looking down, were very flattering for a woman's face. So tell the truth, you weren't looking down the cleavages of ball gowns. You were, you were, I'm just kidding you, you were legitimately looking to make your subject look the best. Uh, yeah, and it, it's true. I was looking down a lot of ball gowns, too. <laughs> I mean... But I, I didn't dress people. That's what they were right. wearing. Yeah. You mentioned the photo that you handed me. I, I had a moment when you walked through the door, and I'll, I'll just hold this up real quick, Derek, on the two-shot, because it is from above. And you look lovely, and so I don't, I don't have any cleavage showing. Well, see, there you go. Neither then nor now. No, but neither then nor now. Something's <laughs> consi but you consistently and are thoughtful in what you bring to the moment, what you bring to the picture. And that is something, Kevin, for you as a documentarian to try and pull that out and show it. How did you even begin to explain, as I said, this icon? I mean, I think it's, Mac does it for himself. Um, and you know, those the two kind of things that I think a lot of people 
associate with Malcolm Perry's photos are the high angle and the cleavage uh, and the idea that he takes photos only of the one percent, the rich people. And it only took a short while to realize those are misconceptions. That's not true. That doesn't correlate at all with what the body of work shows. I mean, I, I think I'm probably one of the only people other than Mac himself who spent a considerable amount of time with his full photographic archive. And he takes photos of everyone. I assure you, I was not wealthy at all exactly. for all of the years. I mean, uh, he first took my photo when I was in high school. I was a volunteer for the film festival. Nice. I was nobody, and yet he took a photo of me, and I didn't even expect it to ever run in the paper, and yet it did. And so that was my first kind of introduction to what it's like to appear in his column and what that, that sensation is and also what that does for a lot of people. It's magic. And, you know, going to the other point, the, the cleavage shots, I, I think, it, who is it? Somebody actually went through your photos and added up, and it was less than, I forget how much percent. No, I went and added it up. <laughs> and what was it? What was the result? Oh, uh, like 6% or right. so, 5%. They but, were the photos that resonated in the paper. Uh, against, it's what right? people see. Yeah. Uh, we still do the same today. You see a lot of things that are disproportionate to reality. Yeah. But yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's, that's just human nature. You know, and Kevin's talking about the fact that you weren't just running around hobnobbing with the rich and famous, although you were. You were also meeting characters and telling stories, telling people stories that needed to be told, that maybe didn't see the light of day. So speak to how you decided who you were going to talk to, who you were going to photograph. Who would make the paper. I don't know how the heck I decided to, yeah. but uh, you, can, you can smell these things, you know. Somebody got to tell. Somebody got a story to tell, and uh, pretty well everybody does. Mm. And some just astound you with what you have to tell, what they have to tell. But it's like following a bear through the woods. People leave trails, and you can pick up on who they are, what they do, what their capability is. And and if you think, boy, somebody else will be interested in that, then I can write about it, and we can put it in the newspaper. And the newspaper is. It's not interested in just l l seeing somebody's mug. Right. They want somebody to read what you put in there. Right. So it's, the it has to be interesting. Yeah. By a great stroke of fortune, enormous numbers of people actually are interesting. <laughs> and you know, have things. You've got to know how to pull it out of them, too, though, right? The, uh, people are pretty good at the, the, talking about If themselves. you say, l let people talk for a moment, they'll tell you. Yeah. You don't have to tug too hard. But if you do have to tug hard, it's always worth it. So there you go, six of one. I, I'd say dozen. Mac is an adept interviewer because he's a great listener. And yeah. that's what a lot of people don't realize. I saw him at various functions and parties when he was doing his work. And a lot of the time, he'd just like touch them with one question and then they'd just keep talking. And it was kind of a remarkable gift. And well, a bit of an unexpected you. question. Would, I'll give you a good be, tip. Go. You can use this on your okay. show. Okay. Okay. I, what I used to say well, long ago, but when I was doing business reporting more than the other kind, although I did that at the Sun too, yeah. I found that it was expeditious when sitting down with captains of industry or whatever to say, assume I know nothing. And people are innately generous. If they think you know nothing, they've got to tell you. They've got to fill Everything. that void. And they do. So, Kevin, you spent a lot of time digging deep into the archives, spent a lot of time with Malcolm. What was the most interesting thing about him that you discovered that you didn't know before? Oh, God, don't oh. tell him. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what he's referring to. I think yeah. he's just being funny. Uh, he's I mean, funny. honestly, I had a real appreciation for Mac's photographic eye. And he, you know, he, he said just a moment ago, what he puts in the paper are just snapshots. But he is a photographer, and like his his background and his earlier work, you see a really like a, a strong sense of a photographic eye. He's he understands composition and how to direct your eye to some place that's interesting. He understands contrast and texture and all of those things. And it doesn't you know he didn't necessarily get to express that in his photos of people in his column, but he really does have an appreciation for it as an art form. And I've found like. You know, in the years that we've been talking and working through this project, he has knowledge of photography and cameras that beats anybody I know who's a new photographer. He knows everything about every camera and what great photographers had used in their work. He's a, he's a connoisseur of the art form. That's awesome.
It's so great. <laughs> and what a, what a career you've had. Not just the photography, but also the destination that your column always was in that great newspaper where everybody would pick up the sun and they would immediately go in search of Malcolm Perry. Yeah, some people literally are born lucky. I've been lucky. They're lucky in this, lucky in this very week. I marked the 50th anniversary of my taking residence with my wife, Nancy. Wow, congratulations. And I said to her on that day, I said, honey, we've been together 50 years. Uh, what am I good for now? And she said, ask me in another 50 years. Oh, love that. Love it. I'm going to take a picture of you two. Right here. Oh, okay, there we go. Get up a bit. It's not going to be that good. You're going to go up high, right? Do this. Okay. There we go. Yeah, okay. Angel. Uh, where can we see it now? Because I know it's already aired once on the Knowledge Network. It's streaming on the Knowledge Network website. So knowledge.ca. You can just search the Society page and you'll find it. Must Love watch. It. It's yeah, a must it's watch. really good. Yes. Really good. Thank you so much. Let me tell you one thing. Okay, yes, sure. When you opened this, you said this icon. I'll compare it. Well, listen, icons are nailed to the church wall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so can, okay, so we legend use that then. Word, then. <laughs> um, um, Okay. Great, great human. And by the way, you got to be good to be lucky. Good friend. I'm just saying. All right. You're a good friend. Malcolm Perry. Yes. Kevin, Kevin Eastwood. The Pleasure. Society page. Thank you so much for coming Loved in. Loved it. Thanks for having us. Whew. All right. Uh, coming up next on Seal Events, uh, let the scalping begin. Oh, yeah. The Canucks are the hottest ticket in town. Finally, playoff bound. And we have a very special guest in studio next, Kirk McLean, the goalie from the last playoff round. We're going to sort of pull out some memories and see what he thinks about the team this year. Right, and we got to get to our viewing party. Hello, viewing party in it to win it. We start with Barb in Port Coquitlam. We have Carol and Doug in Sook. Thanks for watching. And when then we got Steve. And Annette There's from Steve. Richmond. Here comes Hello, Annette. Annette. Here she's coming soon. Oh, there, there she is. Yeah. I love cool those. Glasses. I know, right? Uh, BCRFA is our sponsor. You can get in on a $100 gift card at Romer's viewing party at checkmedia.ca.